Hi Hi there, I'm Alana. And I'm Liv. Welcome Welcome to to The the Transcript. Transcript. This week, the folks at The Transcript welcome Miss Reeves onto The Leftovers, reintroduce The Poetry Slam, bloom at The Bulb Show, and go over the five Ds of dodgeball. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Beto O'Rourke, former congressman from El Paso, Texas, announced his candidacy for the Democratic presidential nomination Thursday morning, throwing his hat into an already crowded ring. O'Rourke rose to the national scene last year when he came up just short of unseating Senator Ted Cruz in a narrow race. He has few big legislative accomplishments, but his success with raising money through small donations and interacting with people at town halls around the state of Texas make him a potentially formidable contender. The House voted unanimously, 420 to zero, yesterday to pass a non-binding resolution calling for the Justice Department to make special counsel Robert Mueller's final report available to the public. The resolution calls for the report to be available to Congress once it is released, although it remains unclear when Mueller's investigation into whether President Trump's campaign was involved with Russian election interference in 2016 will conclude. Nearly one week after a crash in Ethiopia, Boeing has grounded all of the 737 MAX jetliners in the United States. The black box from the plane that crashed in Ethiopia, which killed 157 people, was discovered recently, and the flight data it holds should point Boeing in the right direction as they look for a solution. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome back to The Leftovers. This week, we're cooking with Miss Reeves. So, would you like to tell us what we're making this week? Well, today we're making vegetable mac and cheese. Figured it's something that you could have in your house if you're hungry, but you want to eat a good meal, Mm -hmm. and it's easy to make. So, what's our first step here? All right, the first thing you want to do is boil the noodles. I pre-boiled them already. I usually use this tricolor rotini. We'll just start here. We'll put a little of this magic spray so it doesn't stick to the pan. And I'm gonna layer it. Scoop it right in. Scoop right on the bottom of your cooking pan. And often I have the vegetables chopped before while the noodles are boiling, I'll do the vegetables. You can do anything you want. You could also I today have onions, zucchini, and red pepper. So why don't you tell me what do you do here on a daily basis? Well, my prime responsibility is making sure you're all in class. Entering the absentee, the tardies, if you're late, if you bring me notes, uh, you come in and I want you to feel welcome with that big smile. (laughs) I like to add Pepper jack cheese, it gives it a little spice to my mac and cheese. You can get any kind, Colby cheese is really good. Spread that all around. This is gonna be really good. Get that good. I like to mix it up a little bit to get it down into the lower layer. What is the best advice you could give to the students here at NHS? Because you are full of so much wisdom. Oh, do go on. (laughs) I could. Best advice, get involved. There's so many things that this school offers. Uh, I just, that's what I love about my job. I get to see the students coming through. They've got the academic kids, the athletes, the dramatic children in the theater, the incredible artists. There's so many different avenues, lots of clubs, lots of involvement people can do, and it'll just make your day. It doesn't have to be about all the classwork and things like that that you might dread. You know, if you have a favorite teacher or a favorite subject, you really enjoy it, you wanna go to that class. Well, there's things outside the classroom and I think Mm -hmm. it'll make your experience here at the school greater. All right, so this is looking pretty tasty. Well, thank you. Now you're gonna bake that 350 for about 45 minutes. It's gonna get all gooey, yummy, delicious. Look at that. After you, my dear. Nice. One of my favorites. Cheers. Cheers. Mm Mm-hmm. This is really good. Mm Mm-hmm. I know that you're enjoying your time here at NHS, but do you ever think you're gonna retire? No, they're gonna have to pull me out of here. 
I'll never yeah. retire. I'll be there. That's exactly what we <laughs> love to end. hear. At the end. At the end. Kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. Exactly what I wanted to hear. All right. Perfect. Love you guys. Thank Thanks you for so everything. Much. Can I have a hug? Thank you so much, Ms. Reeves. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. <laughs> The time has come to get creative. Come on, poets, be innovative. Rhyming couplets, tropes, and schemes, winning will hold you in high esteem. Although a trophy is not the goal, poetry allows you to lose control. So push aside your fear and worry to the stage the poets hurry. Watching all behind the curtain is Esther Dalby Vawa with their hopes all certain. I think the best part of the Poetry Slam is like just like you see so many different people that you haven't met before. And so if you're a senior, you maybe don't interact so much with freshmen um, and so being able to like have people submit poetry if people who I've never heard of it's so exciting and I think people are also really going to enjoy that at the slam. I was interning um, last semester at a poetry press and um, I was noticing it was kind of missing from the school. Last year it was canceled. People were really upset so I think a good thing is a good thing for school spirit and just a kind of a fun event to plan. Um, I always think people like when people do like a rap or a song or something that's kind of different than just like normal poetry. I remember people always, you know, remember that. And in our workshops, we've had some really great poems. It's like a minute max, depending on how long your poem is. So like for you being uncomfortable for one minute and then giving so many different people like your amazing art, I think that's definitely worth it. And in room 316 lives the bard. I had the chance to sit down with Miss Bernhard. Um, it always blows me the way the, st the students, some of them will do these slam poems where they've memorized these performances and they get up there and they embody the poem. Um, there have been some, you know, jokesters up there and uh, also just all the different walks of lives who get up there and say their poems. Um, it reminds you how many different people we have in the building and how everyone has something important to say. I know that all the students who participate in the SLAM feel really uh, energized by it. They get out of there feeling like it was a great experience and the audience is always very uh, excited and um, so I just try to encourage them. Submissions are due uh, March 22nd uh, by 2 p.m. and then the SLAM is on the 28th during second period so definitely encourage your second period teachers to sign up. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun. So come, come to the Poetry Slam. So writers, if you're listening, don't delay. We hope to see you soon. Happy Friday. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Happy birthday to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the second female Supreme Court Justice. In other news... and some local entities are already making preparations. The Smith College Spring Bulb Show has begun at the Lyman Conservatory. There you can see a spectacular array of blossoming crocuses, hyacinths, and irises that provide an early glimpse of spring. The show is open until March 17th. Let's take a look at what they have to offer. We think that the bulb show started around 1900. Botany was one of the first majors that was available at Smith, and as part of that course of study, students would take horticulture and part of that class would be actually the practice of forcing bulbs, basically tricking plants into thinking it's spring so that we get them to flower before they normally would flower. Well, it's great to see so many people coming through and enjoying our spaces. We have multi-generation families, we have uh, students and little kids that come through. Uh, as an insider, some of the things I love to see are our horticulturalists do a great job of bringing in some species specimens. Uh, they're less showy than a lot of the other specimens, but it's sort of a, a nod to the insiders. We have these weird and unusual things that aren't quite as pretty, 
but that we recognize as being rare and unusual. Well, I love coming every year because it's the first time in the spring you get to see the colors and to really smell the earth and all the flowers. I saw a really big cactus, and I think that's my favorite plant. I think it's the color and the smells and the shapes and the way they have everything laid out with the height and the low and how it's all positioned. Um, and it's a harbinger for spring. I just saw a frog say in a pond. Thanks for watching. Make sure you head down to the gardens to see the show for yourself. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Dodgeball, a sport for those who are athletically gifted, has returned to NHS. To firmly grasp the mathematics of dodgeball, I decided I'd interview science teacher Matthew Q. Heaney on the sport. I'm joined with Mr. Heaney. Thank you, Mr. Heaney, for being on Hamped Up this week. Happy to be here. I guess what I'd like to ask you first is, would you say the earth is shaped more like a dodgeball or more like a piece of paper? Is the earth shaped more like a dodgeball or a piece of paper? Yeah. Um, well, today in class we were talking about time zones and the fact that it is light and dark at different points, different times, and different parts of the globe, which is not something that you could have on a piece of paper. Uh, that or if you're sitting down and you watch the sunset, if you stand up really quickly, you can see the sunset again. Both compelling pieces of evidence that the earth is in fact closer to a dodgeball than a piece of paper. And in your years of dodgeball experience, would you say headshots should count? Oh, I think absolutely headshots could count. Um, I think when you consider the mass of the ball and the mass of um, the uh, students' brains and their heads, so when... Um, when a student's head is impacted by a dodgeball in the head, um, it causes the skull to shift, but the brain, because it has mass, because it has inertia, tends to stay in place. So the skull collides with the brain, potentially bruising the brain, therefore debilitating your opponent, not only for that round of dodgeball, but all future rounds of dodgeball. So by doing headshots, you're just really, it's, it's survival of the fittest, and you are you know, eliminating um, the cognitive, future cognitive ability of potential opponents. So to me, it's, well, a no-brainer. Shout out to all the teams who tried their best on the dodgeball tournament on Wednesday. And a special good luck goes out to the girls' basketball team for their state finals on Saturday. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Come see your friends and peers in Greece tonight at 7 p.m. and tomorrow at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Tickets are going fast. Skip the service fee and buy tickets from me in front of the office after school today. Hope to see you there. <laughs> Transcript.